SMT Nation, what is going on? It is your boy, the SMT. Uh, we're going to be talking about all things Dish and Boost Mobile today. In this video, there are a lot of details in this. There could potentially be a lot of changes for some people. Some are good. Uh, some, I guess it would just kind of depend on the situation. You may view it negatively, but there's a lot. So I just want to go ahead and jump in. Uh, big shout out to all of my longtime subscribers and viewers. Welcome back to the channel. And for all the new viewers, you know, welcome to you as well. Consider subscribing for more content from the SMT. All right, let's get things started. So with this dish and boost update, let's start with the network side. All right, so the AT&T and T-Mobile networks will be used together. Not together as in, you know, you'll get to have access to both simultaneously on a single SIM. But what I mean is, you know, customers will get access or have the option to choose one or the other. All right. So if you go into a Boost Mobile store, if you are going to be a Dish customer, you'll have the option to pick one or the other. So I think depending on the time, the place, situations where customers could leverage the best case situation and circumstance, they could choose between whatever could work better for them, whether it's for coverage, whether it's for capacity, you know, market to market things can vary. So that's pretty good. We'll ne learn more about this in the future, how that's going to play out. But, you know, you necessarily, I don't know, when you look at what Dish has as branding, so like for their postpaid versus what they have for their prepaid MVNO, you know, how are they going to do this? I don't know. We'll see how that branding works and, you know, is it going to matter by plan and, and how are they going to operate the Sims? Uh, we'll ha expect more updates very soon in the coming weeks. Uh, so I'll probably have an update for you guys as we approach October in that time frame. So stay tuned for that. Uh, also, uh, relative to the network side, it looks like about 2.5 million customers on Boost Mobile are still on 3G only devices. They are going to need migrating. Obviously, the, the whole situation with the T-Mobile Sprint 3G shutdown, that's kind of a thorn in the backside of you know Boost Mobile's operations and T-Mobile, what they want to do with their network. Uh, so if according to my math, based on the numbers that I see that Boost Mobile has been losing over the last year, they're probably closer to like 8 million or so customers, uh, starting with 9 at the time of the merger completion. So that would mean that almost a third of the customers are on 3G only. So that's going to need some attention. Expect some device promotions, some pushes, um, possible extension, depending on what the DOJ does with that whole situation with T-Mobile. So more updates coming there as well. Uh, now, in terms of network access, it is confirmed that the AT&T rates uh, for the wholesale rates for DISH are better than what they're getting from T-Mobile. That is 100% confirmed. This could mean that the plans, you know, offering a better price, offering True Unlimited, since they are going to be AT&T network access, they could possibly get those Mexico and Canada add-ons. So international calling, the roaming piece. So th that's pretty cool. Uh, that could be helping some customers and make Boost Mobile a little bit more attractive, right? Kind of the perks that you see with Cricket could be coming to Boost Mobile. That's purely speculation, but I think that is definitely something that could be out there. Uh, and of course, for Boost Mobile customers, they'll get the option to choose what type of SIM card they want to have. Do you want to be on the AT&T network? Do you want to be on the T-Mobile network? That sort of thing. So that's interesting. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. And in terms of time frame, we have a, uh, we have a date of October 1st for a soft launch for AT&T network access. So if customers want to make that switch, they might be able to do it at that time. It is device dependent. So it is kind of like a situation where it's kind of sort of BYOD if you're going to be able to do that because they aren't going to have any uh, devices, I think, just in time for that launch. So that being the case, you know, you think about all the, the device shortages, the chipset problems, the supply chain, that could be part of the equation. So if you do BYOD, that kind of allows people to get the access if they feel so compelled to do so. Buy their own device, have their own device, just come on and get a SIM for the AT&T access. Uh, next, in terms of unlocked phones, new modernized phones, that'll be a case-by-case -case situation on that side. Now, with Boost Mobile specifically, we are expecting new plans by the end of year. This could be correlated to the AT&T access. 
better rates, better access, you know, um, maybe truer, more organic, unlimited plans, not like what you're seeing today from Boost Mobile with, you know, after 35 gigs, you're slowed down to 2G speeds and things like that. So that may be a thing of the past. Uh, also, you know, Team uh, Dish is going to have some native 5G built out in certain markets. I don't know, we're expecting somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, I don't know, 5, 10, maybe 30 markets during the NFL season. So that's in the short term. Again, we have to wait and see. The, the, the builds are obviously there are constraints. We know of Vegas. We know the NFL network markets, you know, whatever. So we'll have to see as that becomes available to you in those situations. Now, devices, this is where things get interesting for Boost. Five new TCL made devices, 5G enabled, full 5G bands. Those things are going to be important. The NR piece, the, the, the bands that DISH is going to be utilizing for their Greenfield standalone 5G network. So N26, N66, N70, N71, they're going to have to need, you know, those types of things to be able to be compatible with the DISH 5G network. And then, of course, the AT&T access and the T-Mobile access is important. So, you know, N41 and other things. So it's all got to be there. So I think that's what's going to happen. We're also expecting a TCL tablet, cellular tablet. So that's interesting. Cost-wise, TCLs are characteristically more like mid-range devices or entry level and budget. So that kind of gives you an idea of the pricing that we're expecting. Nokia and OnePlus have also been named as partners for devices and OEM manufacturing. Uh, they'll be boost branded. They'll they'll have all the firmware and such. So here are my takeaways, guys and gals. Uh, Dish and Boost Mobile starting to look and sound more like a traditional MVNO and carrier. And you know whether it's the network side, the rates, the plans, those expecting to be changed, devices, having OEMs partner with you. MVNO options for network access. A lot of this sounds and looks really good. The only thing is what's going to happen with naming. Are we expecting dish wireless naming? Who knows? There appears to be some internal speculation that there could be a some kind of a Boost Mobile spinoff rebrand for the postpaid side that would be called Boost Infinite. I don't know. What do you guys think of that name? What do you think of these news and updates? I think the big pieces are the devices coming for the the dish wireless service and boost mobile i think the other is the network access that's coming sooner you know all of that it, it, this is actually really exciting times for dish so i know a lot of people were hesitant and reluctant to kind of go all in on dish i think it's time that you really do start to kind of change your outlook on dish they're starting to look and sound more like a, a proper mvno and a proper network operator and a real carrier again things are going to change i'll offer more updates at that time so stay tuned for more content from the SMT. Subscribe for more. Turn on your bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. And comment down below what you think of all this stuff. I definitely welcome that. And um, yeah, go ahead and drop me a line down in the comment section below. Uh, you all are the voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. And let's go ahead and hashtag Boost Mobile. And then we can also hashtag Dish Wireless. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next video. Thank Peace. you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.